Hi, this is Russell Stannard from teachertrainingvideos.com. This is the second part of the complete training in Screencast-O-Matic. In this part of the course, I'm gonna look at how you can save your videos on your Google Drive. I'm gonna show you what happens if you create an account. If you create an account which is free, you get additional features, and you can also save your videos into their own repository. So Screencast-O-Matic also has a repository. You can make your videos password protected, which can be great if you're thinking of starting a business. Uh, you can organize folders and you can also use image capture. If you haven't seen part one where I take you through the free tool and I show you how to upload videos onto YouTube and also save your videos onto your computer, then watch part one, it's on the screen now. If you're ready for part two, really hope you like the video. As always, if you do, please like it, please share it with other teachers and students and of course comment on it if you want. Let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make a recording and save it onto our Google Drive. And the reason we're gonna do that is because you get 15 gigabytes of free space on your Google Drive. Now, I'm gonna do a quick example here. So I'm just gonna launch the free recorder. I don't even need to log in if I don't want to do this. I can simply click on this button and it's gonna launch the recorder. There it is. Now it's launched very quickly because I've already got the plugin downloaded. If you've watched my first video, you'll understand how to get the recorder ready, but you can see it on the screen and you will notice also that I've got the webcam open here. Now you don't have to use the webcam. You can just click on screen and therefore you're just gonna record without the webcam, but you can actually have the webcam down in the corner. And you've actually got the option, if you want to even, of clicking here and making the webcam full screen. So the webcam would be com the complete recording. Now, what I'm gonna do now is do a recording talking over a PowerPoint and then save it immediately on my Google Drive. Remember, when you make a recording, you need to minimize the browser. You can see I've got the PowerPoint underneath already open. I'm just gonna place it on there. I'm gonna start from the beginning of the PowerPoint. So we've got the webcam. If I want to check everything's okay with the audio, etc., I can click on the settings and just make sure that I've got the right microphone connected, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm gonna start recording. Now when I do a PowerPoint, what I tend to do is record one slide, pause, record the next slide, pause, and do it that way. So click here. So first of all, I talk about slide one. And I jump to slide two, turn it back on again. Now I talk about slide two. And of course I would just carry on. And that's the way I do the recording. Now once I've finished, I click on this button here, done. And we're gonna focus on save and upload. Now you'll notice, in fact, if you try to edit the video, that, that actually you need to upgrade your account. So we're not gonna do that today, but we are gonna focus for starters on some of the saving options. Now we've got the video here, and in fact, if we click here, you'll see there's even more options, and you'll notice that some of them are free. So we can save on our video, we can save on Screencast-O-Matic, we can save on YouTube, and we can save on Google Drive. Now I'm gonna start with Google Drive. Now the only thing you need to do is to connect your Screencast-O-Matic to your Google Drive, and it's very easy. I'm gonna show you how. So I'm gonna click on this button, Upload to Google Drive, and it's gonna launch my web browser because it's gonna ask me, well, what account do you wanna to connect to? Now, all I need to do is choose my Google account that I want to connect to. I do actually happen to have a couple of accounts, but I'm gonna click on this one, and then it's gonna say, are you happy to allow all of these things to happen? I'm gonna say yes, and immediately now, so they're connected, and now what we can do is make sure that we put the right information in. We can give the video a name. We can decide a certain folder that we wanna add it to, uh, if we wanna put it on a specific folder. We can also look at some of the sharing options. Now, what I tend to do when it comes to sharing is I like to use anyone with a link, because anyone with a link means that if I share the link of the video, then anyone with that link can watch that video. And I'm gonna show you in a minute how that works. Now the other options there, yes, you want the highlighter working, 
Um, so the cursor is a great idea. The captions you can't use in the free account, so there's no point in choosing that. So click on the publish button, and as you can see, the video is going straight up onto my Google Drive. Now the great thing is that immediately it offers me the option to click on copy link and copy the link to the video. So I can click on that copy link and then share that link with anybody and they will be able to access the window. And now I'm gonna show you what that would look like. So let me show you that. I'm just gonna click here and I'm gonna paste in that link. There it is and I'm gonna press enter and we should see that the video is ready and there it is. Okay, so just by sharing the link, now I can click on that video and play that video bank back. And of course, you could share that video with anyone. Okay, for this second example, what I'm gonna do is actually sign into my account. Now an account is free, but it gives you a couple more advantages. Now you'll notice that I don't actually have many videos in my account, and the reason for this is that actually at my university I have another account uh, when I use this facility. So I do make good use of this because there are a couple of features that are quite useful. The first one is that you can basically organize all your videos and that's really, really useful. Now you can also launch the recorder from here. So if I come over to here, you'll notice I can launch the recorder. You'll notice also that I can do image capture and I'll quickly mention that as well. And you'll notice that we can organize the content in some different ways. So let's start by doing another video uh, where we're working from inside the system now. So I'm actually gonna click on launch recorder from here. And it basically works in the same way. And the recorder will open in a minute and we're gonna do a quick recording there. You can see it coming onto the screen. Okay, so you can see the recorder on the screen and usual thing got your settings here as you know you can resize it etc of course you need once you've got your recorder on the screen you'd need to resize or put, get rid of the, the the actual website and then concentrate on recording over something now this time what i'm going to do is i'm going to record over some pictures so i've got some pictures on the screen here if ever you find that the when you open something the recorder then disappears just come down to the bottom here and click here to bring the recorder to the front Obviously you can resize to go around the images and there's a not quite a clever little thing you can do when you're working with images. I'm gonna show you it now. Again, you don't have to necessarily go full screen. Uh, if you're happy with the, the size here, that's fine for me. I can click on this button here and start to record. So now I'm talking about picture one, then I stop. Then what I can do is click here, move on to another picture and continue. N now I'm talking about picture two, and I could carry on like that and just do one more. Now I'm talking about picture three. So that's another way of working, and I often uh, see people that think they can only record over one picture, but of course if you jump over to another picture you can do that. Um, so all I was doing was just clicking through pictures in one folder. Now if I click on done, and this time what we're going to do is choose this option, quick share, because what that does is it actually saves the recording directly into your account so that you've got access to it. And you can see there that it's actually already done that. Okay, and it even tells you the link has been copied. Now what does that mean? Well, it actually means you don't even need to copy the link, it's been automatically done. And now if I paste that into a browser, so let's have a quick look. So I'm gonna paste that into a browser. You'll see that that video is now available to play. Okay. So now I'm talking about picture one, and you've got this lovely player with the controls here at the bottom. And so I've actually uploaded the video into their system rather than saving the video on uh, Google Drive or on YouTube. And you can do that. Now I'm not exactly sure in all honesty how many videos you can upload. There is a limitation with a free account uh, we'd need to look at the details, but that is a certainly another option in terms of sharing your videos. Just a super quick plug in from my website. If you like the video that you're watching and you want more free videos, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads and loads of technologies here at the top, and there are lots of videos on the front page of the most popular 
current videos and if you want to follow my work the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter that way you get updated with all the latest videos the webinars the online courses and the blog posts I write right let's get back to the video now if we come back to the account and if I just refresh you'll now notice that there are three videos now in my account okay so the nice thing about this is that you've got the videos that are, you're accessible um, within your system and you can obviously share the videos play the videos etc so that can be really useful and the other good thing is that we can organize these videos into channels if for example we want to have a number of videos together and there's even more possibilities here if we just quickly click here on a couple of the things that you can do so you can obviously move them and share them you can add them to a channel so if I wanted for example the latest video that I've just recorded if I wanted to if I click on channels I can add that to a channel and I've got a channel here already so I'm going to add it to that channel and now that video has been added to the channel the channel's now got two videos in it now there's a number of reasons why channels are useful. The first thing is if we come up to the edit button here, so I'm on my channel and I'm looking at my two videos within that channel, then you will notice that um, I can actually create a password for a channel and therefore I can share a number of videos with one person uh, perhaps even if I've charged them for access to those videos and then if they've got the password they can access the video so it's a way of protecting content and not making it public and the other thing is of course that you can share the content of a ch channel okay so let's say when they've put in their password well, what do they see well basically they see if we just click here to copy the link and just there it is they'll see the videos like uh, in the channel all laid out on the screen and they can click and watch that particular video so this is why channels can be useful uh, because really Screencast-O-Matic could let you set up your own business through the use of channels if you want to create a new channel of course you just click here on the plus button give your title to your channel and you can as I said make it password protected unlisted uh, which is a good way of protecting it as well. That way you can only um, share, you have to share the link for anyone to be able to access it um, or public means that it's actually on the screencast system and available to other people to watch. So channels can be pretty useful if you start, particularly if you're thinking of perhaps starting a business or you're teaching and you've got a number of videos that you want the students to watch. Now you can also organize videos into folders that's more for your organization rather than when you're distributing the content if you if you want students to watch a variety of videos it's best to do it through the channel but you can create a folder by just clicking here and you just give the, the folder a name and then I just close that down if you roll over and click here so if I come back to the videos so clicking back on the videos if I come back up here and click notice it says move and then at the moment they're all saved in the root folder but if I wanted to move them to Russell's folder then I could do that and then that video would now also be saved in Russell's folder and I could do actually do the same with all of those I'm sorry clicked on the wrong button there with all of those um, videos I could add them into a particular folder as well they'll also show up on in the root folder everything shows up in the root folder but it means you can organize particular videos into a particular video into particular folders so now I've got these two videos if I click on that folder you'll see that it's got the two videos that I've added into the folder so um, again it's just a way of organizing the content now the last feature I want to look at within this system is the fact that we can actually image capture. If we come up here and we click on this button here and it will open up an image capture tool, minimize your browser and then click on the ready button, mark the area that you want to uh, image capture and I'm doing that by holding down my mouse and then it will actually take the image and you've got three options first of all I could save that then into my system okay into my account that's one option I could actually and this is quite useful click here and, and a folder is already created on my uh, account on my sorry on my computer where the my image captures can be accessed or I can if I just close that down I can click here and edit it now the edit button is quite useful because you can do a number of things for example we could click here 
and choose quick style arrow and then for example let's say we want to perhaps point an arrow to this and then click like so we can move it around maybe then afterwards we'll click on done we're going to add some text so we'd come down here and then we can even click here and change the style so i'm going to make it bold for example um, we can increase the size etc then i'm just going to write a, a word here so i'm obviously going to click on the text here and just write right mouse just did that wrong actually so first of all let me delete the text first and then I'll write the correct word in so i'm just going to break that down to the that's it and then write the word mouse and then once i've done that again clicking on done i can again move that i can kind of now once i've done that i've got the option now i've sort of kind of added to the picture then of three things here this one's quite useful if you copy that then it's saved in your clipboard you could paste it into word or into a powerpoint you can export the image so i can now click on the export button and export it to my computer perhaps save it onto my desktop that's another option or again I think if you click on this one then it's going to publish it on the system uh, I don't, I've never done that I tend to save the images that I've created onto uh, my computer or very common for me to do is to click on copy image and then just paste that image directly into a word file let me quickly show you that so here I am on my word file I'm just going to click on paste and you'll notice it'll take a few seconds that that image will be added into so it can be a really nice way if you want to perhaps create some images and use them in a PowerPoint slide or in a word slide okay really hope that video was useful please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com if you want more free videos and um, if you're looking to follow my work the new videos the webinars the blog posts the online courses then the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter of course you can also follow me on youtube and don't forget if you follow me on youtube to click on the bell so you get the updates when the new videos are loaded onto youtube and finally if you do want to contact me about doing any training or doing a presentation for your organization then you can contact me from the website and thank you very much